How did we get the pyramid upside down? How did we get to where we are, where we talk about everything except we talk about student achievement, but when we try to get to things that might change or improve student achievement, we run into roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. How did we get there? Well, there's no one uh, thing that we can point to that is the reason why our school system is in the state that it is today, and likewise, there's no one silver bullet that's going to get us out. Um, but the bottom line is that we, as a nation, are really in trouble. We rank 14th, 17th, and 25th internationally in reading science and math, respectively. Um, and, you know, for me, the bottom line is that America should always be number one. Um, and in order to, to, to get there moving forward, we really are going to have to start putting students first um, and stop prioritizing what is oftentimes the interest of adults. Where do we start? Well, at Students First, we really believe that there are three things that, that every state needs to focus on. First is making sure there's a high-quality teacher in front of the classroom every single day. The second is making sure that we uh, empower parents and families with information and options so that no family ever feels like they're trapped in a failing school. Uh, and the last is uh, utilizing taxpayer dollars wisely. Right now we spend more dollars per kid than any, almost, uh, almost any other country, but we're not really getting a, a good return on investment. Michelle Rhea is with us, uh, former chancellor of the uh, school system in Washington, D.C., and the founder of the New Teacher uh, Project. She has a book out also called Radical, Fighting to Put Students First. In West Virginia, Michelle, we have this year, we don't have a big school system, but we had 600. We have 600 classrooms that do not have teachers certified to teach that discipline in that classroom. We're arguing about how to change that. And when I argue, when I when I talk to uh, some leaders, they say we need to raise we need to raise across the board salaries to the point where we can uh, get teachers to come in. But we have budgetary issues like every other state. And I say, why can't we do some things like locality pay or specialized pay or pay for certain disciplines to try to fill those? Uh, disciplines. What are your thoughts about that particular problem? Well, you know, I think that, uh, for one, teaching is the hardest job that there is, uh, and the highly effective teachers that are out there really are the heroes of our country. And quite frankly, they should be recognized and rewarded for the work that they are doing. Uh, you know, I think across the board pay raises uh, oftentimes don't make a lot of sense um, because you want to be able to incent the best people, the most highly effective teachers, uh, to, to come into the classroom and to stay in the classroom. Uh, and so what we would recommend is that um, pay scales move from the very rigid uh, step and lane structure that they have now to one where when a teacher is, is showing extraordinary gains in student achievement, really is successful, uh, to your point, in, the, in, in hard to staff schools or in hard to staff subject areas. That, they, that those teachers are paid more. We put something like that in place in Washington, D.C. Uh, it was very significant such that uh, highly effective teachers in uh, low-performing schools teaching in high-need subject areas could make as, almost twice as much money as they were in the old system. And what it did was it made sure that we were retaining our highly effective teachers at a much higher rate than the ineffective teachers. Michelle, when I bring that up here, I'm told two things. One is that there's no uh, proven system to be able to accurately measure performance and thus reward teachers appropriately for performance, number one. And number two, that you invite uh, envy and animosity in a system when you start uh, paying some people more than others. Well, I think, you know, uh, that the idea that, that you'd create a system with envy and animosity simply because you're paying uh, some people more than others is actually not true. Teachers are right now paid different amounts of money. They're just paid differentially based on things that, that don't make uh, a lot of difference in the classroom, which is what degrees they have or their, their years of service. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't really uh, buy into that. In terms of, you know, whether or not there is a, a teacher evaluation system that can give you accurate information about how effective teachers are, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who say, well, there's no way to measure how good a teacher is, but actually there, there are. Uh, a recent study just a few weeks ago came out. Uh, it was supported by the, the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and what it showed was that you can absolutely measure teacher effectiveness uh, and that uh, states across the country should adopt teacher evaluation systems that um, count 
uh, growth in student achievement levels as a major part of a teacher's evaluation, uh, that they should also count observations of classroom practice, and those observations be, should be done by more than one person, and that they should also include um, parent and teach and, and children uh, student surveys, uh, and that when you take a holistic look like that uh, at a teacher's performance, that it actually is very consistent and very uh, accurate. Michelle Ree is with us. Her book is Radical, Fighting to Put Students First, former chancellor of the Washington, D.C. school system. Michelle, I think that, and maybe I'm naive, I think in West Virginia we're just getting ready to take on education reform. We had a big audit, and uh, and there's been a response by the school board, state board, and the state board is, is reform-minded, and we're getting ready for the legislative session. Uh, and I've been telling uh, my friends at the teacher organizations that they need to ride the wave, and those who want reform don't just go out and start bashing teachers and throw them under the bus uh, because you're not going to get it done that way. I mean, how do you get it done and kind of get everybody moving in the same direction? If that's, or is yeah. that possible? It is possible. And first of all, the reforms are not going to happen without teachers. We need great uh, and effective teachers to be part of the reforms. We want these uh, reforms to be done with them, not to them. Uh, so that, that, that's very important. But second, uh, you know, everyday people, everyday citizens, parents, grandparents, business owners, everywhere, they need to get involved. Uh, there is a tremendous amount that, that, that can happen at the state level um, where uh, people are putting pressure on state legislators to start to put laws and policies in place that are going to finally uh, ensure that, that the interests of children are being the pri are, are the priority of the state law lawmakers and legislatures, um, and that's of critical importance. Um, so, what we encourage people to do is just get involved. You know, go to our website at www.studentsfirst.org. Look at West Virginia's report card, which right now West Virginia ranks an F with us in terms of this uh, policy environment understand what policies need to be put in place, and then really put pressure on your public officials to make sure that they're passing those kinds of laws. Why did we get an F, by the way? Do you know? Uh, West Virginia got an F because, quite frankly, the laws and policies that are in place uh, really work against student achievement. So, for example, uh, you don't have a rigorous teacher evaluation system in place. You have laws in place that when teachers are laid off, they're laid off uh, uh, by seniority alone instead of the quality of the teacher and how good they are with kids. Uh, it doesn't, you're, the, the, the state doesn't allow for things like differential pay, what we were talking about. There aren't a lot of choices for families in West Virginia, and so many families are trapped in failing schools. Uh, not a lot of information or empowerment is given to the parents. So those are some of the reasons why um, West Virginia is really behind the rest of the nation in terms of creating the kind of environment that will allow great teachers to flourish and for all kids to learn. It, it's evident, too, that across the country the change is happening, isn't it? I mean, it's happening. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, there are... Uh, there, there is really a, a sea change going on across the nation now. 38 different states across the country have adopted rigorous teacher evaluation systems that count uh, a significant uh, portion of the of the evaluation on student achievement growth. So there's a wave that that is happening right now. West Virginia just is not a part of that yet. Um, that doesn't mean though that the state can't uh, quickly get there if you have a dedicated and committed legislature, political officials who are willing to take this on, you can see some r really quick change very, very rapidly. You know, the other thing, Michelle, is in West Virginia, there's uh, so much of the authority is centralized and so much of how we run the school system is actually in state law. There are things if yeah. we want to change, you have to go to the legislature and pass a law. It's unbelievably cumbersome. One of the thoughts is if we could return more authority to local school boards who sit there with their hands tied, that they could be more innovative, they're closest to the parents, uh, that we could have a better chance of, of making changes. Well, to be quite frank, uh, you know, if you look at a lot of the states that have moved towards decentralization and have empowered the local school boards, local school boards aren't any better uh, at uh, at making these changes. Oh, really? Um, there, ha there has to be a balance, though. What, what we really believe has to happen is the state has to adopt these laws and policies that put kids first. That's the bottom line. But uh, each local school district and school has to have more flexibility around how they meet uh, certain goals 
um, how they institute certain uh, mandates and how they develop, you know, for example, the teacher evaluation models, but within certain guidelines that the state is setting forward. Michelle Ree, the book is Radical, Fighting to Put Students First. One final question. What do you think of uh, year-round calendar, balanced calendar, as, as, as we call it? Um, well, you know, when when our kids are where they are in this country, which is behind the rest of the world, we have to make sure that we're utilizing every single resource at our disposal. And one of the resources that people really uh, don't think of much or underestimate is, is the resource of time. Our kids have to be in school for longer school days and school years, and we've got to move away from this agrarian calendar. All right, Michelle Ree, Radical, Fighting to Put Students First. It's good to speak with you. Thanks for coming on today.